uh, hey traders and investors. As Dan said, my name is Serge Berger, and I'm the founder of TheSteadyTrader.com. I think you made a great choice to attend this webinar today. I help traders and active investors reach a level of consistent profitability that they never thought possible. Did you know that the reason why most traders are not making money is because they overcomplicate things? That's right. Most traders make things way too complicated. Well, today, <clears throat> excuse me, today I will show you a highly profitable three-pronged trading approach that has not only made me a ton of money over the years, but has also already allowed hundreds of traders just like you to live a life of financial freedom by reaching consistent profitability. How would you like to be able to get up in the morning and not care which direction the market is heading because you know you have a simple, trustworthy, and repeatable process that consistently keeps you on the right side of the market. Furthermore, how would you like to be able to do this from your beachside hotel room in Hawaii or your slopeside hotel room in the Alps? Well, that's actually a very realistic lifestyle to have if you learn to follow this straightforward three-pronged trading approach that I'm going to show you today. Financial freedom is what many traders aspire to, and my three-prong trading approach has allowed me to live a wonderful lifestyle where I spend part of the year in Florida and the other part in Switzerland. Success as a trader is really not that difficult, and with the approach that I'm going to show you today, I guarantee you that everyone can do this. So, over the course of my nearly 20-year trading career, I've been very fortunate to work uh, both on the sell side with the typical white glove investment banks such as J.P. Morgan, as well as on the buy side, uh, hedge funds and prop desks. And this has given me a, a range of exposure to various asset classes from equities to fixed income uh, and some other asset classes. But it has also allowed me to see how some of these absolute pros and some of the absolute best investors in the world are actually making money. So what I'm going to show you today isn't stuff that I just invented or tested myself. This is stuff that I can show you having worked inside the ropes for a long time. This is how the best traders and investors make money. So today as a managed account trader, portfolio manager, advisor, speaker, and author, I'm able to pass this knowledge on to the benefit of my direct clients as well as my audience. I am a really big believer in keeping things simple. Trading and investing does not have to be complicated. In fact, most traders and investors overcomplicate things by a wide margin, and they do that because they look at way too many conflicting data points. Think about that yourself for a moment, or do you think you're, you are making things too complicated? I think most people, if they were honest with themselves, would say, yes, they are. And the thing is, with today's, uh, with today's social media and all the other gadgets we have, we have a ton of noise coming at us every single day and the key to success is to be able to eliminate that noise and just look at the stuff that actually matters. So the more straightforward your process is, the easier it's going to be for you to actually be able to stick with it. That's really, really important. Think about that. The more straightforward your process is, the easier it is for you to stick with it. And I'll give you some examples of that later. The very best professional traders that I have gotten to know over my 20-year career have a very simple but a repeatable process. Okay? They have a simple but a repeatable process. Not many people are going to tell you this, but that's the honest truth. 
many traders and investors at investment banks or hedge funds not only focus, or actually only focus on one, maybe a handful of stocks, right? But they get really good at those stocks. In fact, the two very best traders that I know only focus on one or two types of trading setups, but they are amazingly good at those. They are absolute pros at those. So think about this. If the best traders only focus on one or two strategies or a handful of stocks, then why is it that many private investors think that they need to become a jack of all trades when the pros don't even do that, right? The key to success is to become an absolute expert at one type of setup or maybe two and then look for that type of setup across the universe of stocks, indices, and if you like, across other asset classes as well. So what I'm going to show you today isn't just for stocks, but you can do this in all asset classes and in all time frames because it's a simple but a repeatable process. Let's move on. Again, institutional traders have a simple repeatable process. So what I'm going to show you today is a highly effective repeatable three-pronged trading process. Very straightforward three-pronged trading process. And I can guarantee you that absolutely everyone can do this straightforward approach. And I'll also guarantee you that it's going to change the way you look at financial markets. Before we do that, though, I want to quickly do a little bit of an exercise with you guys that I think really helps to sort of uh, keep an open mind. And just like in life in general, I think for trading, it's important that we continually re-evaluate ourselves to be honest with ourselves to where we are in terms of our skill level. So I've devised these three different levels and maybe just, you know, take a minute and, and ask you, answer to yourself, where do you think you fit? It, the reason we do this is because it's important to understand that we, we, we all can be, can learn more. So if you uh, have just been reading and studying, we've never actually done a trade, you're probably uh, in number one in the beginner phase. If you have done this for a, a few years, but you still don't really, haven't figured out how this works, you probably have an account, you're going through the initial phases of, 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 of feed and greer uh, and probably analysis paralysis, then you're, um, you're in, in, in this uh, second uh, bucket. And in the third bucket, which I think most people actually fit into that, is those are folks that have done this for more than a few years, maybe three plus years, but they're still losing money or at least not making as much money as they'd like to. And um, they've already spent a considerable amount of time trying to figure it out. So uh, those are the three levels. Again, I see a lot of you guys are answering yourselves, and indeed, the <laughs> the study, uh, the the quick survey here looks to be a lot of people are number three, and that's indeed where most people most people are, and that's probably why you're here. And quite frankly, if you are here and you and you're in level number three, that's probably a great, great, great thing because it means you're still open to learn more. So congratulations to all you guys. Uh, who are here and open to learn more because that's what this is all about. You've never done learning. I've done this for 20 years, almost 20 years, I should say, and, and I can tell you that there's stuff I learn every single day. Quickly on the agenda so we can swiftly move through this and teach you all this stuff. Um, today I'm going to explain you why identifying investor mood or emotions is absolutely critical to success as a trader and investor. I'm going to show you how to consistently find the highest probability points that you can buy any given stock, index, commodity, or currency. And guess what? That's all the same. I will then tie all this together to show you the blueprint to this amazing three-pronged trading approach that you can also use for an active investing approach and really any time frame that suits you. As a bonus, I'm going to re reveal to you my absolutely favorite option strategy that you can implement right away to generate monthly income. So I hope you're excited. Let's do this. I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with candlesticks and for that reason I'm not going to go through the basics or the, the textbook definition of what they are but I'm going to give you guys 
a way to look at this, at these candles, is that the pros do. That the guys that I work with at JP Morgan and the hedge funds and prop desks, that's the way we looked at these things. This is not textbook stuff that you are going to get in some academic, you know, uh, technical analysis of trading book. This is real world stuff that I've seen through my own eyes for nearly 20 years. So uh, to kind of to kind of give you a bit of an idea, I think there are way too many candlestick patterns out there. First of all, there's too many to learn them all, but really there are too many in absolute terms because it, does, it doesn't really matter, right? What I mean is that there are only a few patterns that actually continually repeat themselves. So, and those tend to be the most profitable ones. So call me crazy, but I only focus on the ones that work, right? So when we look at candlesticks, because we're looking at it through the lens of investor emotions, as you'll see in just a moment, we'll see that many of, those, many of the patterns are actually the same thing, just they disguise themselves a little bit different. And that's gonna really help you guys be able to buy stocks or sell stocks when it's becoming really clear what the investor emotions are, and then you basically take the other side of that. So when we look at candles, just to give you a real quick overview in case you don't know what they are, just gonna go through this for one minute. We essentially have two options. We have an up day or a down day. That's at the very basic level. If you have an up day, which is this example here on the left-hand side, you have an open, a higher close, but an intraday range that went beyond the open to the upside and below the the the, the um, I'm sorry. This is a this is a down day. I, I apologize. Let me let me quickly uh, refrain that. So you either have a down day or an up day, which is the left hand side, we have a down day, you have an open, a lower close, and an intraday range that extended beyond uh, this range. We call this open to close range the body, and we call these skinny bits here the legs or the, uh, or the sh shadow. Alternatively, we can have an up day. We have an open, a higher close, and again a range that extends. What's most important for the presentation today is the daily close. We're going to be looking at these candlesticks on a daily basis. Okay? We can look at them in five-minute charts and weekly charts and monthly charts and whatever you want, but for today's purposes, we're going to look at them in, on a daily chart just so we kind of keep the presentation unanimous. The other thing why candlesticks are really good is because most of us are visual. Most people have an easier time learning something by seeing a series of pictures. So it's roughly 60% of us, probably a little bit more, have an easier time learning something by seeing a series of pictures. If I think of my three-year-old daughter, well, I guess she's four now, you know, she has these picture books with huge pictures. There is no complicated stuff on that she doesn't understand, but she has a really easy time being able to put things together with a, with a visual picture. And candlesticks allow us to do that. Okay, so the benefits of the candle. They are much more visual than bar or line charts. If you are using line or bar charts, I think you're gonna get a tremendous amount of information out of this webinar today. Because line charts, for example, which is just, if you were to just have a simple line here, are really good to graph things like GDP or some economic data point, and, but they're really bad for trading. So. Uh, they're much, the candlesticks are much more visual than bar or line charts. And what they do is they clearly represent what's going on in the chart. In fact, what they really do is they display not only price action, but what they display to us, and this is the key, guys, if you take nothing else away, write this down. What the candles do, they, they, they show us investor sentiment or emotion and the footprints of investors. So, like I said before, I'm not going to give you guys a textbook definition of this because, or, or analysis of, or, or the description of candlesticks. I'm going to give you how the pros really look at it, okay? And this is going to be a real eye-opener, I promise you. So, the other thing about candlesticks is that if, you just, if you're just joining and you're saying, okay, well, listen, you know, uh, that's all nice. I really just want to know, you know, do they work? And yes, they work very, very well. So, the formations are very easy to spot once you train your eyes a little bit. And that's where the visual thing comes in. Like I said before, 60 plus percent of us have a much easier time learning something by seeing a series of pictures. 
The other thing about candlesticks is that it's decision making without emotions. And we have very, very defined risk. As you see in just a moment, we look at the examples, and we're going to go through a ton of examples so you can really understand this. This person that's hiking on this cliff here, he's got a real clear point of no return or a real clear point where his risk just shoots through the roof, right? It's the same thing with candlesticks. We're going to look at these candles, and you're going to see that they are allowing us to, to circle real clear and obvious points of no return where you need to get back out of the market or where you can set your stop or you have a price target for that matter. So it's all about decision making without emotions because guess what? The candles are telling us exactly what to do. So we have defined risk and clear stops. And with that, let's look at a couple examples of some, of some candles that you really need to know. So again, I want you to think about the price, the candlestick here, not so much in terms of price action, but in terms of what it's telling us about investor emotion in psychology. This is what we call a hammer candle, and the way we look at it is it tends to occur at the bottom of a swing or at the bottom of a trend. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's an, a down day or an up day. I'm just going to give you this example here, number one. They all show us the same thing. If we look at a hammer through the lens of price action, what is this telling us? Well, let's say we've had a downtrend for a few days, for a few weeks, and on this particular day, the stock opens, but then quickly on an intraday basis reverses all the way down here, okay? But guess what? Buyers quickly come in and push this market back up, right? So if you were to think about this from a price action perspective, it's telling you, okay, um, yes, absolutely, this was a nice bullish reversal, and, you know, let's see what happens the next day. If you think about it through the lens of investor psychology, what actually took place is that the bears had no longer any selling power down here. The bulls took over in a major dramatic way, pushed the stock higher, and closed it at the very highs of the day. So the bears capitulated, right? And that was the point of maximum bearishness when the last bears actually sold, right? So that's how we like to think about this, and you'll see in the examples how powerful this thought process is. The other candle I want to go through is called an engulfing candle, and I'll show you a lot of examples of these too. The engulfing candle, and again, you can have a bearish engulfing candle or a bullish engulfing candle. These engulfing candles either occur at the top of a swing, which would be the bearish engulfing candle, or at the bottom of a swing a bullish engulfing candle. Let's take the uptrend example, right? So we had this day X. On the next day, the market rallied higher at the open. It opened up here, right? But it quickly re reversed all that open gap, reversed lower and closed materially lower, completely engulfing or sort of swallowing the price action of the previous day, right? So that's the that's that's what that's what it would tell us from a from a price action perspective. Okay. On this day, yes, these are all daily bars, by the way, guys. I've said this earlier, these are all daily bars I'm gonna go through. Okay, but you can use weekly bars, five minute bars, doesn't matter. So let's look at through the lens of investor psychology. And again, when I was working at the big institutions and on the buy side, hedge funds and places like that, this is how we looked at them. So yes, the market opened higher, the bulls tried to push this market higher. But literally, shortly after the open, or maybe it happened in the afternoon, at some point, the bulls just completely ran out of, out of firepower, capitulated, and the market reversed back lower, right? So this up here was actually the point of maximum bullishness when everyone bought, and there was no one left to buy. So there's only one way to go. That's the way we want to look at these candlesticks. And we'll go through examples here in just a second. So as directional investors, we essentially have three time frames we can look at. We can either be long-term uh, holders of stocks, let's say. We can day trade, 
or we can do something in the middle that's very suitable for 99% of the people, and I call that swing trading. We're looking at time frames of a couple days to a few weeks. Let's look at this relationship between day trading and swing trading a little bit closer. So when we're looking at day trading, intraday trading, it's a very intense focus. And I think, quite frankly, it's not for beginners. What you need to do as a day trader is be in and out of the market before the day is over. It takes a certain personality, and I can tell you this from having traded at the buy side and the sell side, the best traders were not very good at doing day trading. In fact, most of them were really bad. The thing is, intraday, there's a lot of high frequency stuff. There's a lot of algorithms these days and stuff going back and forth. News is trying to put you out of the market at any moment. There's a lot of hectic going on intraday, and most people can't handle that because it's nerve-wracking and it takes way too much time. Swing trading, on the other hand, is much more of a sweet spot. It's really no stress, but it's also no boredom. A lot of people get bored of the long-term buying and holding stuff. But with the two-day to four weeks time frame, you're also in a comfort zone in a sweet spot in the sense that you're finding a lot of uncrowded trades. Again, that's the way we look at it as professionals. We're trying to find the uncrowded trade time frame, right? So when I was trading at these places, we'd always look at that this time frame because really that's where there was a lot of uh, a lot of room to do stuff without getting constantly knocked around. So if you think about it, by definition, day traders can't work in this two-day to four-week time frame because they're intraday, right? They have to be out of their trade by, by the by end of the day. Institutions, on the other hand, can't play in this for the most part because their, their time frames, like the mutual funds in those guys, are, are much longer than that. So you have this wonderful comfort zone that you can play in with real high probability trades. And with that, guys, Let's look at examples. We're going to blow up this chart in just a moment and look at it more closely, but we're going to go through a series of examples right now that's really going to show you how powerful this three-prong trading approach is. So what we have here is the S&P 500. Okay? What we had here first, and again, we'll blow up the chart in just a moment so we can see it more closely. We have a waterfall sell-off. And just think, think, just think of, the, of what I'm saying in the next few sentences. Number one, we had a waterfall sell-off, which was followed by exhaustion selling, and ultimately had a strong bullish reversal, which was followed by bullish continuation buying. Okay, let's look at this more closely. And this, by the way, if you were in the market a year ago, this was the, the volatility we saw in October 2014. What we had was a sharp drop off in the S&P 500. We then had these long exhaustion candles, these hammer candles. And ultimately we had we had buying come in and they pushed the market higher. Now again, we can look at this through the lens of price action and say okay, that's all good and well, uh, you know, but if you look at it through the lens of price action, you don't really know, you don't really have enough conviction psychologically to buy at this point. But think about it through the lens of investor psychology. What are these long tails down here telling you? Well, for one, we had an exhaustive, exhaustive sell-off. And then on these two days, I guess it was, I think it was October 15, 16, and something like that, the market tried to push lower intraday, quickly reverse back higher, and it did that again the following day. Okay? So it's telling us that the bears really tried their best. I mean, they really gave it all to, mush, to knock this market lower after having already waterfalled down, right? But they couldn't hold it down. Ultimately, on our confirmation day, we had strong follow-through buying. So we had one, we had a step one, step two, step three. The follow-through buying came in and confirmed to us that the bears down here truly capitulated. They got scared, and the bulls completely took over the game. All right, and we'll do Q&A a, a, a little bit later on, guys. If you can hold your questions, that would be really good. Let's look at another example, guys. And again, we'll blow up this chart in just a moment. This is the KBW Bank Index. 
And again, let's look at what happened here in sequence. We essentially had a waterfall selling price, sell off. We had a bottoming process take place, followed by exhaust and selling. And all of that was confirmed by a strong bullish reversal, i.e. a bullish continuation buying day. Again, we had a waterfall sell off, followed in this case by a bit of a bottoming process and a strong bullish reversal. Okay, let's look at this more closely. So, strong sell off, and the most visually obvious, the most important candles, and the most important price action period tends to give us the most visually obvious candles or the price action or the footprints of investor, investor emotions, okay? And the most visually obvious and weird looking candle arguably on this entire chart is this one right here. This happened to be early October, just uh, two months ago now, and in, in uh, when the market reversed back higher. Strong sell-off in August, bottoming process, ultimately, Let's look at it first through the lens of price action and then through the lens of investor psychology. What happened? The market pushed lower. It actually pushed marginally here in early October below the October waterfall sell-off, uh, I'm sorry, the August sell-off that we all know scared everyone. But, but then it pushed higher. So from an investor psychology perspective, what happened? The market dropped lower. The bears really, really, really wanted to push this market below the August lows and then just and then just totally sell off even more. Well, that totally didn't happen, right? What happened is that the bears capitulated, the bulls took over, left a long and massive candle, and the very next day, we had a confirmation buying day. Okay? One, two, three. Waterfall sell off, exhaust and selling, i.e. bearish or bullish reversal, followed by follow through buying. The most visually obvious candles are 98% of the time are going to be the most important ones. And if this is all you focus on, I can guarantee you that you will become a profitable trader. These are the highest probability spots to buy a stock, but don't so much look at it through the lens of price action, look at it through the lens of investor psychology, what does it mean? What actually happened at this point? That's how we do it. We did it at JP Morgan and the other places I've worked at. One more example here. This is a bearish example. And again, we'll blow up this chart here in just a moment. We're looking at gold, the GLD ETF that we all know. What we had here, as you'll see in a minute, we had a topping process followed by um, by exhaustion uh, buying, I, it should say here, actually. And then we had a strong bearish reversal. Let's look at this more closely. This is the GLD. Okay, we all know this ETF. We had, and this, by the way, is also just, um, also just took place a few weeks ago, actually, just uh, early November. So we had a strong rally off the August, uh, the summer lows. Gold rallied, partially because it had a bit of a risk-off uh, environment, obviously. And then it started peaking out here. Now, there is a way of determining this as having been a bearish setup, but I want to go through the, and look at the most visually obvious price action through the lens of candlesticks, right? What happened on this day? This is, I guess, late, late, um, late October. Gold tried to rally one more time, and it tried to arguably, the bulls really wanted this, the price to push gold back higher and back above those October highs. Well, that totally didn't happen. The market opened higher, but then really quickly reversed lower, right? So the bulls completely lost in this battle, and we had a big, strong, bearish engulfing candle. Look at how many previous days this, this big, nasty, bearish candle engulfed. It's like five, six days or something like that, right? That's a very, 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 very strong uh, signal that the bulls just have absolutely no firepower. And sure enough, after that, things completely crumbled. 
So I hope you're starting to see, and we're going to go through a ton more examples here. I hope you're starting to see how powerful, how powerful these visual representations on the charts are. Because that's the absolute highest probability spot to, in this case, either get out of a long position or you know, go short, buy puts, whatever other bear strategy you want to implement. Let's look at another example. This is a single name stock now. Again, we're going to zoom in on this chart uh, a little bit more closely in just a second. Hewlett Packard, what we had here was a downward sloping channel followed by a bullish reversal hammer, i.e. bearish exhaustion, followed by a huge bullish buying and breakout day. Now here we're going to layer, we're going to add another layer of analysis here to make, to show you how awesome this is. Okay, so look at this more closely. Same chart, Hewlett Packard. This is a while back, 2013. So what, what do you have here? We had a stock that just kind of fell off a cliff here at this point in, I guess this is at some point in the latter part of August of that year. The stock then started slipping into this completely uncharacteristically tight trading pattern, right? That in and of itself is a reason for me to sit up and take notice. I have a scanner out there that I use for to, to, to look for stocks and asset classes that are trading in uncharacteristically tight manners because ultimately it leads to a move. So what happened? The stock trickled lower, 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 lower. Ultimately, it gave us a bearish exhaustion, I a bullish hammer, where on this day here where I have the where I have the arrow, you can see the bears tried to pull this market lower but completely failed. They tried to, all they managed to do is, is sell it down to the bottom of this trending channel, which isn't that important, but it's there, right? And they quickly pushed it back up. That's a time to sit up and take notice. But the real call to action, guys, again, look for the most visually obvious candles on the chart. If that's all you do, if that's the only thing you do, and I'm telling you, there's a lot of people who only do that and are super, super profitable. You will become a, a successful, consistently very profitable trader very, very, very quickly. That's the point of maximum, of maximum um, vulnerability and maximum emotion, right? What happened here is the bulls came in and completely took over the game, literally changed this chart in one day. All right, and that was it. From there on, the stock rose higher. So look for the most visually obvious candles. Let's continue. Now, we've looked at the candlesticks, but in order to give this entire um, – I think – did we lose sound here, guys? Can someone quick tell me? I'm seeing a, a couple people saying there's no sound. Sound good? Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. So you've now seen the investor emotions uh, on the charts using candlesticks, okay? Looking at it through the lens of investor psychology. Now, let's give this another layer. And this, guys, this is really what distinguishes the pros, what I've seen over my entire trading career from the guys trying to do this at home. And, and from the guys that are doing this really well at home from the ones that are losing money or not making as much as they want to. Once I, understood, once I saw this take place, particularly at my years at J.P. Morgan first, this was what literally changed my entire game overnight. So you need to understand the broad market structure. That is really, really important. I don't think you need to become an economist. 
I don't think you have to read the Wall Street Journal from, from front to back every day. In fact, if you do, you're probably wasting your time. <laughs> but you need to have a somewhat of a handle of where we are, particularly in terms of monetary policy and maybe some political environment as well. But monetary policy is important. We need to understand at the very basic whether we are living in a supportive monetary policy environment. In other words, is the Fed, uh, if we're talking about U.S. stocks, is, is the Fed easing? And we all know for the past years that's been the case. We're now starting to shift into a bit of a different environment. So we now need to be really, really vigilant about this. But we need to understand that. What, what is the major... What is the major wind? Is it, is it wind in our face or is it tailwind? Step two, and write this down, guys. This is really important. Step two, once we have a decent handle on this, look for stocks, sectors, industries, and if you want to play other asset classes that favor in this environment. At its very core, that is really, really important because you don't really want to fight the trend unless you do really small trades here and there. It's just not in your favor. Over time, you are going to um, over time you are going to find that a very difficult way of making money. And step three is you want to look for candlesticks that ultimately then give you that trade confirmation. And as you'll see in a moment when we go through these examples, you can also do this uh, the other way around. You can actually start with step three and work your way back as confirmation, which is to say that if you found a good candlestick setup through the lens of investor psychology, you can then make sure that that's still the direction of the broader trend and whether that is still supported by the broader market structure. Okay, let's look at some examples, and this is really, really important, guys. I'm going to go through and show you the same charts I just showed you before from a different angle, a bit of a longer-term time frame. This is the S&P 500. I showed you before that really strong bullish reversal that we saw, and that was at the lows of October 2014, so a little bit more uh, than a year ago. Now, step one, when we had that sell-off last October, the Fed was still very accommodative, right? So we were still working in that. But look at where that sell-off ended and gave us a really strong bullish reversal, an exhaustive, where the sellers got completely exhausted, right at that 2011 uptrend line, okay? That's hugely important. Look at this. Look how what crucial spot we came to. And again, if we look at, look at this through what the step one, two, three process, you would understand that not only are we seeing a strong bullish reversal through the lens of investor psychology and price action, but it's happening at a really important spot at a long multi-year support line, which is still supported by the broader market environment. Let's look at another example. This is the KBW Bank Index that I showed you guys before. Okay? So this was the example um, of uh, last August, was, um, or just this past August or September. Or I think actually this was the lows in, in uh, September or, or, or uh, late September, early October, I think is when these lows were. So... What took place is that we had a sell-off because people were a little bit afraid um, of what the Fed was going to do. Uh, but ultimately, as it became clear that the Fed is still somewhat uh, hawkish, the banks started to rally very, very strongly. And we had that really strong bullish reversal take place on the daily chart that I showed you before. But look at where it took place on, on, on a multi-year chart, right at a really, really important support line, okay? So the bullish reversal, i.e. the bears got completely exhausted right at an extremely important support line. And when we saw these long tails followed by follow-through buying take place, we knew 
that we had a great trade. So step one, make sure you're trading along with monetary policy, at least for the time being. Step two, make sure you find things that are still trending in that direction. And step three, look for confirmation of these exhaustive moves. The highest probability trades that you'll ever find is not to buy the KBW Bank Index up here when it's trying to break higher, although it could. The highest probability point is down here when the bears get completely exhausted at a multi-year support line that is still favorable to the current market environment. That is why the institutions that I've worked with for the past nearly 20 years, that is why we they, they constantly make money in this and it's because we look at it in a different way than the retail investor does. Because you want to take the other side of emotions and there's no better time to buy when there's blood in the streets as the saying goes and it's very, very true. Let's look at another example. Here we have the, um, the gold trust, the, the GLD that I showed you guys before. Okay, I'm going to quickly scroll down here. And I showed you a bearish example. I showed you guys, I showed you guys a bearish engulfing candle on the GLD. Remember that from before? Now, this was just a few weeks ago, I guess a month, month and a half, two months ago. And what happened was is that we had a risk on a risk on moment, and the and the gold didn't like that moment, that risk on moment for 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 stocks. So we saw the candlestick reversal, the, the capitulation of, of the bulls, but look at where it happened on a multi-year chart, right at an important support line, right? It told us that the direction of the trend is still lower, so that's step two, and all of this is still being confirmed by somewhat of a risk-on environment uh, for stocks and, 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 and still, still somewhat supportive of, of, of the Fed, right? So if you look, if you take this one, two, three step process, you're going to turn into a trader that sees setups and doesn't take them to one that takes every single qualified setup and thus becomes much more consistent, much more profitable, and just generally looks at the market through the lens of opportunity and not so much being scared. The traders I've worked with over the past 20 years and, and what, I, what has made me very successful uh, and wealthy is really not hesitating when we see a setup, but you need a layer, you need a layer of confirmation. And this simple one, two, three step process does exactly that. Let's look at one more example. This is Hewlett Packard. I showed you that chart before. We're looking at it now from a multi-year perspective. Again, this uh, example I showed you before is from 2013, but what we had was we had a stock that was trending higher for some time. It then pulled back about 50% of this entire move, so it was still in a, in, in, a, in a general trend higher. What then happened was a very strong bullish reversal that we, I showed you on that daily chart before, and it completely reversed this chart back up. So, it was, so that basically told us that the trend is still intact, and this strong bullish reversal is now getting the stock back to the upside, all of which was still supportive in the broader structure by uh, the monetary policy and the general uh, growth in the economy at the time. Okay, so I hope you guys are seeing how this one, two, three step process is really, really working extremely well. Now, we'll get back to a lot more examples in just a moment, but I promised you guys earlier that I want to show you a good options trading setup that you absolutely need to remember. And this, I can tell you, um, one, of the, one of the funds I worked for, this is the only strategy uh, we did on a monthly basis, and it's something I do on a monthly basis now to generate income for my investors and for uh, subscribers. So my absolute favorite option strategy is this. What you need to do is you need to look for momentum stocks like a Tesla, like an Amazon.com, or something like that, where the stock is going from a steep slope to a vertical incline. Okay, where a stock is going from a steep, a steep slope to a vertical incline. And this tends to happen in these go-to momentum stocks 
because people get overly anxious to buy these stocks. They're literally toppling on top of each other to buy the, to bid these stocks higher. We all know gravity works in real life and it also works in the stock market. When something goes vertical, it inevitably has to mean revert to some extent. Interestingly, what happens when, it, when one of these momentum stock goes vertical is that implied volatility actually rises very sharply because the smart money knows that this, that this, this giddiness where people are literally just toppling each other to, to buy the stock higher is not really sustainable, so they're, they're pumping up implied volatility. What that means for us as the smart money guys who are trying to take the other side of, of investor emotions is that we have a wonderful opportunity to sell calls or call spreads for huge premiums way out of the money. Okay. In other words, we can go in and make a bet that stock X, after having already gone vertical for weeks and maybe months, and once it's given us a bearish reversal in one of those, one of those, um, say, engulfing candle I showed you before, where the bulls got completely exhausted. Once that takes place, we can go in and say, listen, and, and sell calls or call spreads, literally 20, 30 percent out of the money for for huge premiums, and those premiums. We get to keep a lot of it very quickly when the stock then starts to mean revert and that tends to happen very quickly. So that's my absolute favorite option strategy and I've traded many option strategies over the years at all these places and I can tell you uh, across asset classes, this is by far the best option strategy that you can do as a seller, um, a seller of options. So let's continue with some more examples here. Before we do that, a quick summary though. Candles show you investor footprints and emotions. What we need to have is a straightforward but a repeatable process because that really is the key to consistent profits as a trader and active investors. That's what the pros do. That's what I've done at these shops for many, many years, and that's the absolute key to success as an investor. So the three-prong trading process that I have and that works absolute magic is understanding the market structure. It's really important. Have an understanding of the broad market structure, environment, monetary policy in general. That doesn't take much. It takes you taking a quick look at what the general general picture is. Scan for technically sound stocks, commodities, whatever you're trading that are in that trend. And three, use the one, two, three reversal uh, process I showed you uh, in the first part of the presentation as your trigger to buy or sell. And you can use the process in reverse. You can start with number three and then verify with two and one. Okay. So I hope you guys are seeing how, how, how amazingly powerful this is. Now, guys, let's go through examples and I want to take uh, some examples from you guys. So if you could show me your tickers, as I like to say, uh, let's, let's do that right now. Show me some tickers that you want me to go through. Okay. I'm going to quickly show you guys a couple here and then I'll take some of your uh, some of your examples and we'll start with the SPY okay now what's important is uh, what's important to understand again as I said before that we can use this in any time frame I'm going to show you an example on the SPY now on an intraday basis but it works on any time frame okay um, let's go through and make this an intraday chart. Again, if you're not a day trader, and 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 you know, I, I don't think that's a, a hugely great thing to do for most people anyway. Uh, don't worry. Let's look at the SPY here uh, on a five-minute chart. Let's start just with what happened last week, okay? Um, and where we can see, you can see the one, two, three step process in in working, okay? Each one of these little compartments is one day, but it doesn't it doesn't really matter. So each bar here is uh, 15 minutes, okay? Now, this is on the 24th of November. Okay, look what happened. We had a sell-off, so waterfall sell-off, followed by exhaustion selling, followed by a bullish reversal confirmation buying. Again, we can look at this through the lens of, of, of price action, or we can look at it through the lens of investor psychology, and it's telling us that the bears down here got exhausted, the bulls took over, and the very next five-minute bar, in this case, it could have been the next day if this was a daily chart, we had a strong confirmation buying. Again, the lens of, the, the, through a lens of, of price action, that's nice to see, 
But I guarantee you, if you look at the lens of investor psychology like the pros do, you will have a much easier time executing on this trade. Okay? We then had it again take place on this day. This was the, the 27th of November. What happened here? We had a sell-off. We had a strong exhaustion selling uh, bar take place here. Okay? Bears got exhausted. And the very next five-minute bar, we had a follow-through buying. You guys see how powerful that is? We had it a little bit here, right? That didn't work as long, but we had it, we had it take place. What's important here is the follow-through buying. Because that's count that that's sort of the bulls really sticking it to the bears down here, if you will, right? Someone said they want to see the SPY uh, today. Well, today, quite frankly, I haven't seen anything take place. So, but yesterday, yesterday we had a beauty, right? Let's look at this. In fact, let's look at it on the five-minute chart. That's even better. We had a beautiful trader yesterday, um, right here. Okay. Look at what happened here. Waterfall sell-off after an initial rally in the morning, followed by exhaustion selling down here. Right, The bears tried to push it all the way down here, tried to fill that open gap, as we call it. Couldn't take place. And a few bars later, we had a beautiful follow-through buying uh, bar that we could have held through the end of the day. Right? One, two, three, step reversal. All right, let's look at a few other things. Let's go back to the plain white chart. Let's look at a couple things here. Some people are asking, um, uh, one, one thing here is JCI, right? Let's look at this thing. I'm gonna show you guys an absolute beauty of a trade we just, uh, I just did yesterday and we made a, a ton of money. We made 85% of these puts uh, this morning, okay? so. Look at this. This is JCI, a stock called Johnson Controls, and you can see it's continuing lower today. Look at this stock through the lens of investor psychology. What do we have? It moved higher right into its 200-day moving average. And look at what happened yesterday at the 200-day moving average. Okay? The stock rallied right into the 200 day. It then severely, severely reversed back lower, okay? See how the, how the bulls lost complete control and reversed back lower, right? That's really big. We had a complete bearish engulfing day and we bought puts, a ton of puts, and this morning with the stock fell apart, okay? You see how powerful it is through the lens of investor psychology what happened up here? The bulls lost control. They completely capitulated. Not only did they did they give back the gains uh, of the day, they actually the stock actually closed lower on the day, fully engulfing the past few days uh, price pre, pre, price action. Let's go through some examples people have here as well. Uh, someone's asking about SWKS Skyworks. Okay, let's look at a couple things here. Um, we can look at multiple examples, right? And by the way, guys, just so you know, this doesn't work every single time, right? In fact, if you if you if you look at a stock that's very choppy, that's in a, in a choppy environment, it's not going to work all the time, right? It, nothing works all the time, okay? Someone's talking about the 30-year bond. I unfortunately I can't pull up the 30-year bond on, on this platform. My apologies. Um, but look at, for example, so we had we had Skyworks here in this case. In, in this case, um right here. Okay, I'll show you an example where it didn't work, okay? Because, you know, I'm not here to scam you. I'm just trying to show you that it works most of the time. Like everything, it's not going to work every single time. So we had a waterfall sell-off followed by a strong bullish reversal, uh, a bearish uh, capitulation day, right? So the bears completely lost control on this day. The very next day, the bulls bought, right? Look at this follow-through die. They, but the very next day, they reversed it again. So to me, that was reason enough to be, would have, would have been reason, I didn't do this trade, but would have been reason enough to get cautious and get back out. But look at the bullish, the next bullish examples that all worked really well, right? We had, on a more micro level, we had a, a reversal take place here that happened, bearish exhaustion followed through buying, that worked. Here too, bearish exhaustion followed through buying, and the most recent one, bearish exhaustion followed through buying, they all worked, okay? Let's look at some other examples here. 
someone's asking about uh, what was this thing here? Yeah, GME, right? So GME is, a, is obviously a very popular stock, and and in G, GME, the best the best example really, um, what this person's asking for is right here, right? This is early 2015. Okay, look at what happened here in early 2015. Waterfall sell-off, right? And look what happened on this day. The bulls, the bears, really, really tried to push this stock lower, right? Really, really tried to push the stock lower, but they couldn't hold it down. And it took a couple days till we had to follow through buying, but once we had it, we really had it. And then the stock just ran and ran and ran. Okay. Someone's asking about Amazon. Amazon is a trending stock, so you're going to get a lot of this every time there's a pullback. Okay. So let's take Amazon. Let's get rid of a couple of these things. I'm going to get rid of a couple moving averages to make this thing really clean. Okay. And we'll go through more examples here in just a minute. Look at, for example, what happened here in late, in late August, right? That's when the broader market sold off. But what happened here? Look at the bullish reversal. Again, don't look at it through price action. That's gonna, just going to confuse you. Look at it through the lens of, price, of, of investor psychology. Stock sold off sharp along with the broader market, came in here, gave us this bearish exhaustion day, right? That happened to get right back to the 100-day moving average, which has been great support for the stock for a long time. Two days later, the stock gapped up very strongly, telling us that this entire thing down here was bears completely, a bulls completely capitulating, right, from from up here, and the bears could no longer keep things lower, so there was only one way to go, and that was to go higher. Okay. So we're going to go through more examples in just a minute. It was Albert Einstein that once said that the definition of insanity is repeating the same behaviors and expecting a different outcome. Well, if we translate that into trading, um, we need to have a plan, and a plan to increase your accuracy and reduce your risk and really reduce your stress and dramatically increase uh, your, 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 your profitability and consistent profitability in your trading starts, all starts with knowledge. Okay, that's really, really important. In my pro trading course, I go into great details of this institutional three-pronged trading approach that I just gave you a bit of an outline of. I'm going to go through and show you a low-stress, high-probability strength trading method that the pros use, that I've used for many, many years at all these desks, and that works like an absolute charm. It's all about nailing reversals by correctly reading investor sentiments. You want to take the other side of investor emotions. The best investors and traders take the other side of investor emotions. Normally, this course is $199, and it does include a 30-page course guide, which has a lot of examples, and you can use as a standalone with a lot of charts and, and, uh, uh, and, and examples. Um, today, we're going to offer it for just $97. It's www.thestudytrader.com slash now, where you can get this. www.thestudytrader.com slash now. It's a course for you guys to learn an institutional three-prong trading approach that you're not going to get anywhere else. It's all about how the pros really do this. This is not retail stuff. This is stuff what the pros do, and that's why they consistently, or a lot of them, uh, make consistent money this way. You can also call 859-963-3445. Uh, for this course. Again, it's usually $199. Today, we're going to offer it for just $97. www.thestudytrader.com slash now. I'm going to go through more examples here uh, in just a second. We're also going to offer you a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's absolutely no risk. If for any reason you don't like it after uh, 30 days, you uh, will get your money back, no questions asked. Again, www.thestudytrader.com slash now. And yes, it works for currencies. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll uh, go through uh, some Q&A here in a minute. It works for currencies. It works for options. Yes, 
Absolutely. Yes, there's option strategies in there as well. Yep, thank you, Dan, for pay Dan just pasted in the uh, the link. Thank you for that. So, uh, you know, that raised the question, who is this course uh, not for? The course is probably not for someone who can't be patient and disciplined in their approach. The course is not for someone that's looking for someone to tell them exactly every single trade, when to do it and how to do it. It's not for traders that are unable to make their own trading decisions. And the reason for that is because trading, even if you follow this exact three-prong trading approach, and, and I urge you to do because it's, it, it's amazing how great it works, you're still going to have your own little rules after a while that fit your personality. You're not going to take certain trades, others, you know, time frames. It's all going to be a little bit different. So this is all about learning something as opposed to it's all about learning how to fish and not for the people who just want to have me feed them a fish. It's for discipline. And so, so the question is, of course, who is, who is the course for, right? I'm telling you who it's not for. It's for traders that want to be able to make their own trading decisions, right? Traders that want to reach financial independence by understanding truly how financial markets work. It's for the disciplined self strutter who can actually follow a three-pronged institutional level rules-based trading approach in their trading. So the course uh, is a 11-stage a 11 11, uh, video series and the 30-page ebook. And it goes into great, great detail of all these different setups. So I know that you may have purchased a course on trading or investing before, and so you may be thinking, well, you know, why do I need this specific course? I would say don't let your mind go there because you have to remain open to new information because this course is going to allow you to see financial markets much more clearly and lead you to execute only higher probability trades much like what I just showed you throughout the presentation. Um, there are many people out there who offer courses on trading and investing, but this course really is different. The three-prong trading approach that you're going to learn in great detail here has allowed me to live a life of financial freedom. It truly has, and, and it already has helped many others to do the same. But um, don't just take my, my word for it. Brian Rakwalski, he's a vice president over at the RJ O'Brien Group, he said that a study trader provides in-depth technical analysis unseen in other sites. The thorough explanations on the intricacies of technical investing have made me a better investor and trader. And this is coming from someone that's already a pro, right? So Brian has really learned a lot from this. I know he's 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 just become great. He's, just, he's been making the craziest trades, and he's been sending me these, these his PNL, and it's just it's completely off the charts. Okay, guys, let's go through. Let's go through a couple more things. What are you going to learn? Well, you're going to learn this institutional three-prong trading approach. You're going to learn all three variations of the bullish and bearish reversals in this 11-series video course and the 30-page ebook. You're going to use that to correctly use candles to trade mostly in a direction, but also against the broader market direction for some trades. You're not going to have to learn hundreds of little patterns and things like that. You're going to learn what's important and how to use it. Again, it's www.thestudytrader.com slash now. You're going to learn the rocket launch setup and the gravity pull setups. These are amazing setups that are just, once you start learning some of these things, you're going to see how you're going to see the markets in an entirely new new way. You're going to literally be able to look at markets and instead of being confused and scared, just have confidence to either do something or totally not do something depending on, on what you're seeing. And then, guys, and this is the key, we're gonna, you're going to learn about multi-time frame analysis. Over my trading career, nearly 20 years, um, the most important thing that I've seen people do to filter trades is multi-time for analysis. Making sure that your trade setup is also qualified 
in it multiple time frames. You're going to learn all about that. You're also going to learn about confluence zones. Okay, confluence zones are so so important to dramatically increase the probability of uh, of your trades going profitable. Okay, so let's, some guys are asking here some more questions. Um, So the scanner, I have someone's asking about the scanner. Um, you're going to learn how to scan this in the scan for the course. There's no, it's not a names proprietary scanner. I'm going to teach you how to scan for things. Um, how long are the are the 11, 11 video modules? They're they're the, between 15 and 30 minutes each. Okay, and they're followed with the 30 page ebook, so you can really it goes in, it goes into great great details in, in all these things. Okay, the recording is about a month old. Okay, it's it's brand new. It's brand new. And I've added some, some great new stuff in there. Um, we're also going to go through, and I'm going to teach you some things that is basically going to under teach you how to trade things like channel breakouts and wedge and flag patterns and all these things that is completely going to disqualify what a lot of books talk about. Because I can guarantee you the books and things, the way they talk about it, for the most part, doesn't really work. But I can tell you the pros, use it a certain way, and that's what we're going to teach you. Okay? We're going to teach you about resistance support lines, moving averages, Fibonacci retracements, all sorts of things to 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 um, completely enhance the scans that you're going to get by doing this three-step process. You also can learn where to set your stops. We're going to go through a sound risk management strategy, and we're going to do a little bit of mental aspect of trading, which is a huge part of it. And last but not least, we're going to talk about money management, so you're going to learn about money management as well, so that you can uh, you can take uh, so you can take this um, you can take this approach and not only look at look at it as a single stock picking process, but also implement an entire money management system with it. These things apply to forex markets as well. Norman's asking, yes, absolutely. Uh, they they absolutely uh, work for uh, Forex as well. Uh, someone's saying that the site is down. Let's have a look at that. And let's go through. The site is working. Steady, the SteadyTrader.com uh, slash now. It's working. Okay. So in short, guys, you need to take this course. That's a really, really important insight, I think, for, for anyone that wants to that wants to have a simple, straightforward process, which is what the pros do. Let's look at more examples. If you guys want to show me a few more if you guys want to show me a few more tickers, let's go through some more examples. Netflix. Yes, let's go through Netflix and let's go through Walmart. Okay? Good idea. Netflix. Okay. So I mean Netflix, you know what you have here is a bullish trending stock. Right, so how does it work here? You un you know that we're in a bullish trend, so clearly what you're gonna get with a stock like Netflix is strong bullish reversals that are very visually obvious. Again, you can buy Netflix at every single dip, but uh, you're much better off buying it when when the when the fear becomes uh, severe, right? Like we had, for example, here uh, in the waterfall sell-off and the strong bullish reversal in late August. But also, for example, here, look at this day, okay? This was just a, a couple of weeks ago. Netflix came in. It sold off for a couple of days. But on this day, it, the bulls tried to, the bears tried to push the market below the previous day's low, but it strongly pushed back up. So again, through the lens of price, I can say, okay, that's a nice bullish reversal. But the question is, through the lens of, of investor psychology, what does it tell you there? Well, it tells you that the bears completely lost control, the bulls are taking over, and sure enough, we're, we're pushing towards new highs in Netflix now. Some people are asking, do you have a live trading room? I, I don't have a live trading right now. Right now, it's something we may install a little bit later. Um, there are option strategies being taught in the course, yes. Um, absolutely. Option strategies are included in the course, how you can use this using options. You can use this setup I'm teaching you using options. 
Okay. I just I just showed you guys earlier the trade I just did yesterday closed it this morning for 85% profits. We sold, uh, we bought put options in in JCI and Johnson Controls yesterday because of the strong bearish reversal right at the 200-day moving average, which, which I don't have on here right now, but the strong bearish reversal. Um, and uh, and so uh, yes, you'll absolutely learn these strategies. Yes, yeah, so thank you, Ben. Look forward to having you on board. Yes, the, the the setups you're going to learn uh, in the course are going to teach you are going to teach you um, how to get in and how to get out. Okay, both entry and exit levels. Uh, this is this is a different class. This is not uh, for people that are members of the Study Trader uh, uh, Trade Alert Service. This is just a standalone uh, course that you're going to you're going to learn all this. And then, if you want the trade alerts as well, uh, then that that's a that's another uh, something else. Okay. Now let's look at someone said Walmart. Okay. Uh, what I'm using here, I think this is the 100-day moving average. It's totally irrelevant. Don't 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 worry about what this blue line is. Um, but someone asked about Walmart. Okay. So for one, Walmart's in a downtrend. Okay. So you don't really want to try to buy this stock here until we see a bottoming pattern. So let's look at when it was actually still in an uptrend just to give you uptrend examples. I can give you, we can go through the bearish examples here, but um, it's usually easier for people to, to grasp the concepts on the updates, okay? So for example here, what happened here? Walmart, again, you know, people people try to, to, to trade stocks and they, they only, and they try to do every single trade that comes up, but you only have to take the high probability one. So the highest probability trade here was when this stock exhausted itself into the support line. One strong sell-off. The next day, the market, the bears exhausted themselves, and two days later, we had a strong follow-through buying day. So, I think my time is up, guys. But um, again, if you want to take uh, advantage of the offer, I'd love to uh, have you on board in uh, my pro trading trading course. That's going to teach you all about. Uh, this three-pronged institutional level trading approach that I have learned uh, at the desk at JP Morgan and, and the buy side as well. Uh, it's usually $199, just $97 uh, for you guys here today. Again, it's www.thestudytrader.com slash now. And uh, looking forward to having you guys on board. Again, it's all about keeping your, 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 uh, your process simple. The best traders that I've worked with throughout my career have a very simple but repeatable process. And I strongly feel that most traders that I've worked with with a career, over my career that were not good, they had a too complicated a setup, a process that they couldn't repeat and thus couldn't actually trust. But this is going to teach you something very straightforward, very high probability. And with that, Dan, I'm going to pass it back to you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, everyone, for listening.